Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zach's. I'm your host, Ben Rains. In this week, we're going to be talking about some sports stocks to think about buying right now because it's uh, some retail stocks amid the, the busy holiday shopping season. Uh, but before we do any of that, I want to say just remember if you have any questions or episode suggestions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. And then make sure to subscribe wherever you are listening to this podcast. Uh, so before we get into the specific sports-related retail stocks to think about buying uh, right now, I want to do a little bit of a retail overview as a whole with some uh, holiday shopping estimates and then kind of where the retailers stand amid Q3 earnings season. Uh, so overall, the National Retail Federation predicts that holiday retail sales, so that's November and December retail sales, which excludes, so not including automobiles, gasoline, and restaurants, will jump between 4.3 and 4.8% to as high as $720.9 billion dollars which is really a, a mind-blowing number. And this would come after 2017's holiday shopping period sales jumped 5.3% to about $690 billion. Uh, and then the firm also noted that that holiday shopping forecast kind of matches its overall 2018 re retail forecast with that between 4.3 and 4.8% overall jump in retail sales from 2017. So that gives us a little picture of what to expect from retailers about maybe as, maybe as high as 5% higher retail sales overall. And then let's look at a little bit of the Q3 earnings season because as most people know, we're kind of, we're getting near the end of it in terms of the big, huge S&P 500 giants that have reported already. So uh, in terms of retail, which really started, the brick and mortar retailers really started reporting uh, last week. The big, the big players at least. So we have 63.2 percent as of Friday morning. Uh, retailers in the S and P 500 having reported their earnings. Uh, we had Macy's and Walmart, and this reporting last week. This also includes Amazon and some restaurant operators who reported. Uh, over the last couple of weeks and with Amazon even before that. So overall, of those 63% of the S&P 500 retailers, uh, you had earnings up over 30%, 30.5% on around 7% higher revenues with 92% beating earnings estimates and about 71% beating revenue estimates. So that gives us a good picture of what's going on. Uh, and despite some solid numbers, Walmart from Walmart and Macy's, there was a little bit of a pullback in the stock. Uh, so that could be what to expect maybe from Target and players like Kohl's and other companies who are reporting their earnings later this week. But with that said, there are some retail stocks that are going up recently and that kind of fit with this, uh, this trend of some sports retail stocks to consider at the moment amid this holiday shopping season craze because with Thanksgiving this week and Black Friday, it's shopping's on the, the front of everyone's mind. And one that we're going to start with fits with this cold weather that is happening to at least a lot of us. Uh, we're in Chicago, so there's some been some cold weather here, and that is Canada Goose. So they are uh, a company that's been around for some time. We'll get into a little bit of their history, but they reported their quarterly earnings results last Wednesday, and it's seen their they've seen their stock price surge since then. So I'm going to get into why it's a company to consider taking a look at now, but I want to do a little bit of their history to give you a sense of what the company's all about and why they might be interesting to uh, take a look at. So it's a Toronto-based company that sells high-end pretty high-priced winter coats, parkas, jackets, and now some sweaters and more uh, other underlayer-type garments. So they IPO'd at around $13 a share in March of 2017. And uh, before we get into any more of that, I want to just go a little bit more of back farther. So this is they've only been trading since the spring of 2017, so not that long as a public company, but they've been around for a while as a company itself. Uh, so Metro Sportswear is what it 
started at in Toronto in the late 1950s. They were specializing in vests and raincoats and snowmobile suits. So up there in Canada. And then by the 70s, the founder's son-in-law had joined the company, and he established a brand within the company called Snow Goose, which would later turn into Canada Goose. And then by the 1980s, they started rolling out this their their pretty now famous uh, high end parka. It was the Expedition Parka, and it met requirements for a lot of the scientists who were b- stationed in Antarctica, and they're they're still used pretty much pretty heavily down there today. And then later in, in by 1982, uh, it was a big deal. The first Canadian summit at Mount Everest wearing a Canada Goose jacket, which back then was still metro sportswear so this is the history of this company so if you're thinking how is this really sports related it's outdoors it's that's why it's that that's what you're thinking of when you think of canada goose it's high-end warm warm coats in these really really extreme conditions uh we go through a little bit more of the history in 2001 the president and ceo uh was now the third generation of the same family. So Danny Rice, I believe, is the pronunciation of their last name. Uh, he took over and he agreed to remain made in Canada. They, they're they not trying to cheap anything by outsourcing any of uh, where their products are made, so it's still made in Canada. And then in 2004, the, the Coats made a pretty, I guess you could say, pretty splashy debut. They were appeared with their branding in two pretty big films that year so the day after tomorrow and national treasure so you saw their little logos which you now know they're on the left sleeve most often a a little patch is the only way you can really tell it's a canada goose jacket but besides that it's a a pretty big puffy parka that looks extra warm uh and then by 2016 was the first time they opened two flagship stores one was in Toronto, one was in New York City, and then, like I said, they IPO'd in March 2017. Uh, shares opened at $18 that day, went up 25% that day, was the second biggest IPO at the time in 2017, right behind Snapchat's big first day. Hasn't been very good for Snapchat since then, which is the exact opposite for Canada Goose. Uh, they now have opened some more flagship stores in the fall, in Short Hills, New Jersey, Montreal, Vancouver, Beijing, Hong Kong. They also have flagship stores in London, Boston, Chicago, Calgary, Tokyo. Uh, 11 stores total to date. And as I said, pretty high-end jackets. I believe their highest price when I was perusing their website is around $1,500 for a jacket. Uh, Parkas are starting at around $900. And then they're selling sweaters for $395. So these are very high-end places. Uh, And what's interesting is that now at a lot of some of their new shops, their big flagship stores, they have cold rooms where it can go down to minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit, where you can actually try these jackets on. And I know it sounds a little gimmicky, but if you're going to have someone shell out up to $1,500 for a jacket, it's kind of nice if they actually get to try it on and test what it feels like. Uh, Because for a lot of people that aren't used to the cold or you just kind of assume you can't get warm, if you, if you wear a really nice jacket, you can get pretty warm. And I think that really is their, their selling point. Uh, because and I've actually mentioned this to people before, because some people I know don't really understand the whole craze. Uh, we've talked about it even in this office before about why someone would spend so much money on a jacket. But people spend a lot of money on really goofy things that are way less practical than a winter coat that could last you at least a decade and actually keep you warm if you live in, say, a city like Chicago or Boston or really any city uh, that has a winter. It, Spending $1,500 over it extended, it's not like you wear it once. You could have it, like I said, for a long time. So in terms of their their business, it is a business that doesn't seem like it has uh, a, an end in sight. It's not a, it's, I guess you could say it's a fad, like anything, but the coats themselves have been around for a long time, and people aren't going to stop wearing winter jackets anytime soon. Uh, and now I want to get into their most recent quarter because that's uh, 
why that they're, they're back in the news because they they did really well recently. So their shares exploded 17% following a much better than expected third quarter. Total revenues increased just under 34% to 230 million Canadian dollars, roughly 176 million US dollars. It uh, topped our estimates. Their shares also, or their earnings per share came in at 35 cents per share, beat our 19 cents per share estimate, was up over 50% from the year ago period. So that is a good uh, thing to notice there. Their wholesale revenue was up about 18% which is good because that's where a lot of their revenue is still coming from. And then another good sign, which is what's going on with these flagship stores and e-commerce push, their direct consumer sales were up 150% uh, from 20 million to 50 million. And that was in Canadian dollars. So they're reporting their number in Canadian dollars. Anytime I mention it without US dollars, it's going to be Canadian dollars. Uh, And then they said that specifically their department store sales were up, their online sales were up and their standalone store sales were up. So that's their direct consumer revenue. And they're currently a Zach's rank number one right now, which is number one strong buy. And it's headed into their biggest season, which is the winter quarter. Uh, so their shares closed Friday at around $70 per share, down slightly from their recent all time high, which was uh, $72.27. And the stock price is up. 306% since going public uh, in March of 2017. Now I want to look at a little bit of their estimates looking ahead. So for their current quarter, our Zach's consensus estimates has their revenues climbing about 25%. And then for the full year, we have them climbing about 21% with their revenue for the or their earnings for the quarter expected to climb about 35%. And then 35% for the year. Uh, But we should note that Canada Goose itself lifted its full year sales growth guidance to be up at least 30% from their previous 20% range. So those numbers can change once more analysts come in and uh, change their estimates based on Canada Goose's actual guidance itself. And just for reference, total fiscal 2018 revenue, because they're currently in fiscal 2019, that revenue in the year ago was up around 46%. So that's that's the range they're going, and now they're going to say they're hoping to be up 30%. This year, so it's a, it's a company definitely to pay attention to. Uh, they're growing their wholesale business. They're expanding into the greater China area. They're also currently investing a lot of money in the business themselves while still becoming a little bit more profitable, which is good to see. And as I said before, uh, the idea that people actually use these coats in Antarctica, uh, film crews all over the world in cold weather settings where these jackets, uh, people use them on Iditarod races in Alaska, dog sled races. These are real warm jackets that do have an actual purpose. I know the price is really expensive, but you, I'm, I don't own one. Uh, but you're getting what you're paying for, where, and it's going to last you at least some time. So this is not as much of a fad as say some other uh, retail stocks might be, but it's definitely one to consider. Like I said, and then we're going to quickly move on to another retail stock that might be a little bit of a fad, but it's. It's one to consider at the moment, kind of ride this wave of some positive momentum this stock has, and that is Crocs. And that's Crocs, the company, yes, that slip-on rubber, rubber slip-ons loved by some kids, and now it seems like teenagers. It trades under the ticker C-R-O-X, and they released their Q3 earnings on November 8th. Their shares jumped 27% in one day, so big, big numbers from them. Uh, Their third quarter revenues topped uh, our estimates, 200 or 206 million, 261 million, sorry, excuse me, uh, 261 million versus our estimate of 246 million. Their clog revenue, which is, that sounds even goofy to say, uh, which is about half of the company's total revenue was up 13%. The shoemaker itself pointed to some... uh, 
initiatives they've done to kind of build some brand buzz. They've done some promotions with uh, a famous rapper who some people might have heard of. I I actually saw this on Twitter. I feel like a cu- uh, couple weeks ago that this was happening. Uh, Post Malone, really famous young rapper with uh, younger people. He has a shoe he designed with Crocs. I guess it's sold out in 10 minutes. So they're they're getting this teen buzz. Uh, P- Piper Jeffrey, which is uh, an analyst company, tracked, did a survey of around 1,800 teenagers in talking about their shopping preferences. And they said they found that the Crocs brand hit its highest level in recent history, ranking 13th among preferred shoe brands. I know that sounds a little goofy, but that's up from 27th just a year ago. So 27 to 13 in a short period of time is is a, a solid number. Uh, and it's also interesting because Crocs, over the summer, there was a rumor that the company was going to shut down or at least uh, not start f- slowly phasing out and closing more things because they shut down one of their factories. But now uh, they are just manufacturing through third parties. And like I said, they're coming off a, a solid quarter. The stock, the stock is... Uh, doing really well. Crocs stock is up 156% over the last year, 38% in the last three months. It's currently trading at around $27 per share, which is right below its 52-week high of $28 per share. And it is also currently a Zach's rank number one, and that has to do with some really positive earning estimates revisions going forward for their fiscal year and their next fiscal year, where the revenue estimates themselves don't look that solid uh, or that big. The fi- their current fiscal year revenues are expected to just grow by about around 5%, but it's that bottom line that's supposed to be up huge. Their full year fiscal earnings are supposed to be up almost 1,900%, so swinging from a $0.02 cents per share loss to a 35% uh, or 35 cents per share gain. So that's pretty good on the bottom line. And it's it's definitely one to pay attention to and see if it continue riding up. I don't know how long this this wave can last uh, because the ugly shoe craze, it, it might it might just be starting in the sense that it's becoming more famous on a bigger scale. Or since it's becoming big now, it could then be on the way out before you know it. So it's definitely one to pay attention to. Uh, it's it's really hot right now. But unlike Canada Goose, who has some real solid, in my opinion, business to to work on for an extended period of time, these parkas are not going to all of a sudden, even if the same people aren't wearing them, they're still going to be warm jackets that people want to wear at a high price point for a long time. Whereas Crocs might kind of be on, oh, we have this young rapper, kids like it for now, but in a year and a half, maybe it's out of style, but we'll see. So definitely pay attention to that one. And then there are some other companies that are currently Zach's ranked number ones that are sports based stocks. Lululemon, we've touched on that still is Zach's ranked number one. I and just look it up. Uh, the stock price is up 209% over the last three years, which is up above Adidas. It's crushing Nike, which is up only 22% over that three-year period. And it's crushing Under Armour, which is actually down 50% over the last three years. So Lululemon's one to pay attention to as well. And then we've mentioned uh, on the show before, I've touched on them, and they're still doing pretty well. Columbia Sportswear is a Zach's rank number two right now. And then Under Armour, which has caught a lot of fire over since uh, November of 2017, really just jumped up since then. Uh, there is Zach's rank number two, so that's one to think about right now during this holiday shopping season. And then I want to close with just some uh, Thanksgiving weekend holiday stats because these are oddly fascinating. I don't know if it's fascinating to everyone, but they're super fascinating to me because you just realize how many people are at least planning on shopping during this crazy Thanksgiving week. So the National Retail Federation and uh, Prosper Insights Analytics puts out uh, some projections every year. And they're projecting that 164 million people plan on going shopping uh, this Thanksgiving 
day through Cyber Monday. So 164 million people in the United States plan to go shopping this Thanksgiving week. Uh, this survey showed that roughly 21% of people are, or 34 million, are planning to shop during Thanksgiving Day, which is I, more power to you if you want to do that. Uh, and then 41% are expected to shop on Small Business Saturday, which you'll see American Express uh, really promoting that themselves, that they started Small Business Saturday. Uh, maybe that's true. I don't know. Uh, and then 32, 32 million or 20% will shop on Sunday. But by far, uh, the biggest two days are Cyber Monday with almost 46% or 75 million people expected to search for some online bargains that Monday after Thanksgiving. But still, at this point, I think we can all guess what the biggest shopping day is expected to be, and that is Black Friday, where they're expecting 71% of these people or 116 million Americans are expected to go shopping the day after Thanksgiving. So I know those might not be that fascinating to everyone listening, but I just thought that was mind-blowing to think that 116 million people are going to go shopping throughout the United States on one single day. Uh, so this really is a great time for retailers. And as I said, there are a few retailers that are in that sports-specific kind of world. You might not think Crocs is the most sports specific, but you know anything you can wear to the beach, we're, we're thinking you can wear to and from a, a basketball game as a slip-on. We're, we're, we're going to say it's a, a sports-related stock, and then definitely Lululemon and Columbia Sportswear and Under Armour as well, some to think about at the moment. But that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com.